This show, just like all the other StarCast shows, are available at adfreeshows.com. You know, the ones that stand out to me with Kurt Hennig and, and Roddy, and we need three hours to go into some of these, but uh, the one big uh, happening that stands out is the, the, is the screw job. And, and if you want to, everybody's heard about this, but the one thing that I like to know that I, that I want to talk about is the documentary. Wrestling with Shadows, which, uh, which is awesome that that was made because it really showed who you were. And the one point is that when it all came down to it, it wasn't a matter of you losing that belt on Canadian soil. No, nothing was, to do with the, that. You know, I, even that, um, there was a, um, some documentary or not some, something that came out a few months ago on uh, the screw job that they interviewed me for, but... They did such a shitty job. I thought they really only made it more confusing. You know, the, the, the really the simple truth of everything is that um, when I found out I was working with Sean, I went to Sean um, and said to him, like, hey, Sean, I heard we're wrestling at Survivor Series. I just wanted you to know that I have no problem putting you over. I'll put you over any way they want. I have no problem dropping the belt to you. And I just wanted you to know that I would always be a professional in the ring. I wouldn't take out any of my, we've had some, we've, Sean and me had had some fisticuffs in the dressing room prior to all this. So I didn't want him to know, that, I wanted him to know that he would be safe in the ring with me, that I didn't carry any hard feelings towards him, and that I had no problem dropping the belt to him. And Sean looked at me and said, I appreciate that. But I just want you to know I'm not willing to do the same thing for you. And that was it. That's what the screw job was all about. It's like, well, you, that is such an insult to tell somebody like, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm happy to help you and your family. But then he says to me like, well, I'm not going to do anything for you and your family. It's kind of like they cross each other off. It's like, oh, well, screw you. You know, I'm not doing anything for you either. And uh, I just, I told Vince the next day after that happened and Vince was going to call Sean and me into a room. And, and confront Sean on his um, stupid comment. And uh, the next day, Vince never touched any of that and promised Sean the belt. And I stood up in the room and I said, well, I just want you to know I'm not sure I'm going to do anything till I know what's going on with my career. Because my, Vince was threatening to, to break my contract. And so I was, I was in a position of, um, you know, just trying to be professional and the, the whole screw job was just a case of um, somebody insulting you and telling you that he would never ever do anything like that never do the same favor for you and I was the champion I'm going I'm the champion here I just already promised him I'd drop the belt to him and I just stuck to my guns there I was like I'm not gonna drop the belt to him till he loses to me somewhere and proves to me that he's got enough respect for me to you know to do the, do the honors for me then I'll do the honors for him. And that's where the whole rift came in. But you genuinely have, have mended that fence. And, uh, yeah, I, I actually just saw Sean not too long ago. And, you know, we, we got along like we did when we, like when we were good friends years and years ago. And it was, I don't think there's any issues between me and Shawn Michaels anymore. And a lot had to happen uh, along the way there. But uh, what did it mean to be inducted the first time to the WWE? Because a lot of people didn't think that that might ever happen. Oh, it was um, very important to me, as was my career. You know, I, I, um, I had a when I had my stroke in 2002, and I was in the hospital, which was bad enough as it was. Like I was like totally um, confused and uh, just totally bummed out about what having a stroke and not understanding even what the long-term consequences of a stroke were. But um, I remember they had just brought a phone to my room so I could make local calls. And I plugged the phone in, and my phone rang, and it was Vince McMahon on the phone. And I, was, I hadn't talked to Vince McMahon since I sat on a park bench with him when Owen died. I hadn't seen or talked to him in, in quite a long time. And I had a lot of bad, bad blood still towards Vince and the company. But... It was out of nowhere, and I answered the phone. I remember there was this hesitation about, like, slamming the phone down. Like, I wanted to slam it down. But at the same time, uh, the, the other side of me, the, Vince was like a very much like a father figure to me and somebody I had a lot of respect for once upon a time. 
and I, 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 I restrained myself from hanging up on him and talking to him. And I was, like I say, I was kind of a shattered mess anyway. He was from, I could barely hold the phone and stuff like that. And, uh, but he talked to me about, um, I had always talked to Vince about releasing a Best of Bret Hart. Like, um, we always talked about, like, whenever I had a really good match, he would always go, that's one's going to go on the, the um, anthology we're going to put out of you, like, when, you're, when, when we're done with your career. It's like you're going to have this DVD set or whatever. We, we, we just talked about it, and I remember he, we talked about it that day on the phone, and he said, we'd like, still like to do that with you. And I said, I'd, I'd like to do that. That would mean a lot to, to me to have my career. I didn't want my career and everything I did just to kind of get erased and... Um, minimized and uh, so we had a nice talk and the more he talked he talked to me then about being in the hall of fame and i said well if you inducted if you ever offered the hall of fame for me i, I said i would most definitely come i feel i have a right to be there and i earned it and uh <clears throat> so he he promised me that it would happen and i was grateful for that and i remember i kind of hung up the phone and after we talked and he gave me a big pep talk about I was a fighter and uh, I, you know, I was going to beat this thing and you know I, I just found his words really helped at, at that critical moment when I kind of <clears throat> maybe needed a pat on the back or some support and um, so I was always grateful for it. I remember I hung up the phone and that was the first step towards thawing out our, our bitter pro you know the problems that happened between us Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.